The required data entry macro is a macro that will check the data entered into a cell and execute the macro. For example, if a field is left blank, it won't allow the record to be saved until we take action and actually fill something in this field. So I'm going to go ahead and apply or assign the uh, required data entry macro to the customer name field so that way nobody forgets to leave it blank. But when they do and they try to save it, not only will it prevent them, but it'll actually take the cursor into that cell so they don't have to take that extra step and they can just go ahead and type in the name. So to get started, let me go ahead and right click in a blank area, go to the design view, and then we need to bring up the property sheet for the entire form. So to do that, come over here in a blank area and right click, go to properties, it brings up the property sheet, the selection type is the entire form, and then click on the event tab and then click in the before update cell here. The before update box here is used to specify events that will occur before the form is updated or the record is saved. So after you type in everything over in your form and somebody tries to save it, then it's going to check something. What is it going to check? Well, it's going to check the macro. Let's go ahead and click on the corresponding build button for the before update box or cell here. And then we want to create this macro that it will check before it updates. So the operative word being macro. So let's open up the macro builder, click OK. And it's the same screen that we're used to in the past couple of training videos to create a macro and then also edit the macro. So let me first go ahead and type in the comment what this macro is going to do. Come up here, click on the drop down arrow, select comment to require data in the customer name field. Okay, let's go ahead down below, set up our condition, which by the way, let me click on the drop down arrow. It's going to be an if then statement. In other words, if this happens, then do this. The if replaces conditions in the previous versions of Access. So as you recall in Access 2007 or earlier versions, you have the condition column. Well, this replaces it again. So let me go ahead and click in here and then type in my condition. Customer name is null. So if that field in square brackets is empty, what action do we want it to do next? We want to go ahead and click on the drop down arrow, type in C A N, there it is, cancel event. After I type in the first three letters, if the rest are highlighted in blue, I can just hit the tab key and it automatically adds it. So what's the event? It cancels the record from being saved or updated. And we can go ahead and add a comment just below here to say that. So click on the drop down arrow, select comment. Let's go ahead and type it in. If customer name is left blank, do not save the record. That's the cancel event. So I'm leaving little trails of breadcrumbs for those who come in here going, huh, what's this, you know? If, to require data entry in the customer name field, what's the cancel event? Well, if they don't type something in there, then it won't save the record. So it makes it pretty simplistic for the next person who's going to be working in this database to figure out what's going on. And then after it cancels that, let me go ahead and click Add New Action. How about if we have it go to, type in go to, there it is, go to control, hit the tab key to select it. So that way, if, if they're in another field, Let's take them back to the customer name field. So all you have to do is go ahead and type in the name there and not have to, you know, use their mouse to get back to it. And it's going to be open square brackets, customer, close square bracket. And then, of course, we can add a comment here. Click on the drop down arrow, select comment. Let me type it in really fast. There you go. Go to the customer name field. And then when we're finished, let me go ahead and save the uh, macro here. Close out takes me back to my form, and you can see over in the uh, property sheet before update is going to check this field here before it allows me to save the record to make sure that that customer name field is not blank. And then we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and right click, go to the form view, and let's click on a new blank record, and we type in a customer number. And I'm going to leave that blank and go ahead and type in the address 123. In any case, let's go ahead and save it right now. So shift enter. And notice how it took me automatically right back to the customer name field and it didn't save the record. If I try to click back and click back again, it doesn't allow me to do that because it says, hey, look, you need to enter in the customer name. Well, it doesn't say that. So that's the next issue I need to work with. In other words, I ought to have a message macro that displays a message to let people know what's going on because somebody could say, hey, this is broken. Every time I try to go ahead and save it, it doesn't do it. I mean, it doesn't flag you, but you'd think that after each time it keeps coming back the cursor to the customer name field that they might get it. I don't know. In any case, hit the escape key to get out of that so we don't have to uh, type in that record. And in the next training video, I'll show you how you can go ahead and add a message macro. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.